this April 26th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Um, first, we have to approve the agenda. I move approval of the agenda. I'll second. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor of approving the agenda? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Let's proceed. Um, so comments from the chair. I uh, have a few things. First, I have, have an overshare. So if I seem bummed out today, it's because my dog passed away this morning. So, um, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of, I might be distracted. I don't know. Um, I did speak with Alec Ellsworth uh, last week uh, uh, and told him what we would be interested, that we'd be interested in hearing from him and, and hearing his ideas for economic development um, as related, you know, between the parks and the city and the city plan. Um, as, I, as I think we all gathered before, I mean, he, the parks director works with the parks commission on the implementation strategies and the in the chapter that we have so far so this won't be this wouldn't be Alex's first time being involved in the process but he did agree to come in and, and he's going to put together some ideas like um, maybe things that aren't already there in the chapter for us to, to consider um, I, I don't know when that will be I have to wait just wait until he gets back to me um, I tried sharing with him the uh, the sheet that John and Stephanie put together. Um, but I don't know, can you guys tell me if the permissions even work for that if we try to share it outside the planning commission? Is it public? It's not public, but I don't know who's got the permissions for sharing that. John may have been the one who created it, but okay. I'm not. Yeah, I think it was John that created it, but we might. But I think you'd be people. able to. Yeah, I think if since we all have edit access, I think we would be able to add people. Yeah. Okay, I did. I, I didn't add his. I didn't add him. Um, so I guess we can assume that he hasn't seen that. But the, this is the only thing I share with them, and it's it's not crucial because really, in a lot of ways, it was just summarized the park chapter that he already worked on. So, um, but that's good to know. So we'll hear from him sometime in the future, which uh, is a good segue for the last thing uh, that I'd like to mention. And that's that we're tonight we're going to hear from the CNS working group uh, a little bit more about, you know, the approaches that we're going to take and as working groups and as the entire planning commission. And so after, after that, I'm hoping that we'll be poised to actually start cranking out some work. So in the next, you know, several meetings, um, you know, I'll work with Mike to get uh, implementation strategies uh, on the agenda for us to actually approve for those chapters that we think we're ready for. Uh, and maybe we can discuss that tonight about, you know, which ones we think we're ready for and which ones we would like especially with, with the working group work to, to keep, you know, tuning up before it comes to the planning commission. But the gist is let's start cranking out these chapters so that we don't fall behind. Um, Cause you know, it's a huge project. Does anybody have any comments or questions about that? Go ahead, Barb. Yeah, just a quick one. So what we've seen so far from the CNS group were, um, were the aspirations and the goals, but not any of the strategies, or were the strategies included as well? I didn't we'll get that We'll be going far. over some of that today. Okay. All right. That's fine. Thanks. Yeah, I think I think it will be clearer after that. Um, 
but yeah, we are going to start voting soon. So in the in future meetings, voting to approve some things. And for one thing, we don't want to create too much of a bottleneck for Mike. Like if we, so we need to kind of, you know, incrementally approve things as we go. Uh, but if anyone's uncomfortable about that, just, you know, definitely speak up about it. And that's really all I have to talk about. Um, so the next item on the agenda would be general business. I don't think we have anyone from the public here. So we can move along. I have a quick question, Kirby. Yeah. Regarding, um, I don't have a problem like iteratively approving chapters. I'm just think. can you just confirm that we'll have a chance at the end, like if we realize later down the road that this chapter conflicts in some way with this chapter that we already approved, we'll have some time to do reconciliation. In my understanding, yeah, would, would be the process we would follow. We would approve the chapters and they'd mostly be good, but it does, that does not preclude us from revisiting. Is that okay. a question? And would you yeah. agree with that, Mike? Yeah, I think the hope is that we get some, some of the big pieces through. We don't want to kind of get to the end and then do huge amounts of rewriting. But certainly if we find pieces that need to get adjusted, you're, we're certainly going to be able to do that. Um, my hope is just to have the planning commission part of this plan done by December. So um, that just means we've got to start putting some of these in the rear view mirror. Um, you know, if we've got some that we're comfortable with, then we can get those put behind us. And that lets me kind of sketch out the remaining chapters I have to write plus the remaining pieces. So, but yeah, we can always go back and change it right up through our public hearings, right up through city council hearings. There are going to be opportunities to make more edits and changes. Okay, thanks, Mike. Does anyone else have any more questions about the what to expect? Okay. Uh, so that brings us to the CNS working group, what we were just talking about. Um, and it looks like, uh, yeah, so Marcella and Stephanie are the representatives here. So one of you two. Uh, take it away. I can start, or if Mike wants to jump in. We met this, we met, when did we meet? Last week. It's Monday. Sorry. Maybe Mike should go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already struggling. It's only Monday. <laughs> Mike can start, I think, and I'll, I'll fill in. Um, <laughs> I'll okay. Um, so... I'll just share my screen real quick rather than have everybody on there. That one. And then I think I need to go up here. You guys can see that now. That's the web page. Yeah. So, um, if you go to go to our shared um, um, drive, our Google Drive that we have, you'll have all the tabs when you go to the plan website. And so we're just going to open up for now the historic and the template. It's a little, little bit slow. Okay, so uh, this is um, the historic. So we went through um, really to kind of go through and have some discussion that the, the, the CNS subcommittee went through um, and looked at, you know, the aspirations and goals we had already, all of us have talked about and made that those decisions, but what we started to work on was to take a look at a, a slightly different way of doing the um, the the strategies. So it was kind of a two part um, exercise. So one was 
to go through and collapse because we had talked about, you know, could we collapse some of these down? We've got a lot of these in. Um, and so what I started to do, these are ones I have not done yet. This is the old list. So um, the what was in the documents prior had been plugged into this Excel table and it resulted in 23 different um, different strategies. So what we started to do is to collapse these in. Um, I had just drafted these up as a, as a way of collapsing these guys down um, to see how many we'd get to. And then we talked as a subcommittee about what we thought about them. And we made a couple of notes, including, um, I think, if we look, there is... Uh, this one maybe didn't have as many um, others to collapse in. Uh, we'll go and take a look at parks where we found a couple that we could do some more additional collapsing of. But the idea was that we would be able to collapse these down to from what was 20 something. And I'd already gotten down to, um, you know, eight. And then some of these are going to get collapsed down as well. So the idea was they would all plug into the table and I'm trying to see where my bar is here. And then eventually you'd have over here the goals. So this would G1 meant this particular one happened to correspond to certified local government applies to G1, goal one, goal two, and goal three. So we were able to start to collapse these things down. Then the second part of it was because we were collapsing them down, or I was collapsing them down in this draft, it meant the text was going to kind of get written different. So the first thing I did was to actually put a header up. What is the name of the thing that we're talking about? What is the strategy? Um, and it was, you know, in this case, certified local government. It's continuing a program. And then there's a brief description of what it is. And sometimes if this is appearing in three different goals, it may have to have a couple of sentences to reflect the fact that this program allows, um, you know, this is historic. So it's about understanding historic resources, um, communicating that to the public and how do we protect them? So certified local government helps all three of these goals. So we kind of want to have a description in here that talk, talks about the fact that the certified local government is the program that allows us to get grants to do those, those studying steps, those understanding pieces. It's also where we get money to do outreach programs. It's also where property owners get access to preservation. So we've kind of got these different opportunities. Um, so it ends up with a little bit more text under them. Uh, and and the, the group thought that was a good idea. Um, and so we had some questions. I actually should have grabbed my sheet. Mike, given that there's more text, could we expand um, cell C so that it wouldn't be quite so long? I mean, is there anything um, that says these cells have the to end. be? What's that? Yeah, well, it probably won't matter in the end because these are going to be used. Remember, I don't know if John was able to show you guys one time he had a meeting where he went through and there are different ways of displaying this information in cards. And um, I, I think how this is set up now is really going to be just used to generate cards that would then connect them, which is also why you've got these over here the G, G1, G2, G3, because you can sort by those. So you could actually, if you wanted to, once the database is set up and you've got the cards, you could query the cards to go and say, show me all of the strategies that apply to goal three. And it would give you those cards. Or it would say you could query it in different ways. It was a pretty interesting program that John was using. Um, so I don't think people will necessarily be looking at this directly as much as they will be looking at the cards. Um, and this is going to be kind of a database sitting in the background. 
And I think John would have to be here to show you how the cards worked, but it was pretty pretty slick when he was showing that showing that program off. So, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have my notes from Friday's meeting directly in front of me, um, but we did talk a little bit about how to handle the policies. Um, some policies we felt we could probably get rid of and some policies we felt were important to keep. Um, we also, Mike, on the policies, talked about whether or not the recommendation in, or the, the line in the plan was this is the policy or so-and-so should make the policy. Yeah, so that was a little bit of a, a structural question. Um, thanks for reminding me, Marcella. So the one question that we had was sometimes in plans, the plan itself establishes the policy. And we have had these set up to go through and say that the council is going to adopt the policy. And it's a little bit of a, um, you know, a chicken and egg, how, how we want to handle it. My thought was that I was going to put these in here as, as I did to say that council will adopt the policy. Um, and the reason for that was I didn't want the council or the public to have to debate every single one of these policies before they adopt the plan. And maybe that would take a long time to go through if we were just going to generically do it. But maybe there are some that, you know, I would think the next time we readopt this plan, any of them that have already been adopted, we would just have in there as um, as statements rather than adopt the policy. It'll go and say, you know, continue the policy of protecting and enhancing um, the use of the city's architectural engineering landscape. Blah blah blah. Um, so I thought I was thinking that was my approach, but there are a couple of different ways we could do it. We could certainly have the document itself be the policy statement. Um, and and I, if, if people feel strongly one way or the other, we can certainly make a decision now. Otherwise, it's something we can just keep in the back of our mind to know that at some point we'll have to answer that question as to whether or not we want the city plan to be establishing those policies or whether we want those policies to be established independently and separately. Um, so, um, so again, there was a little bit of a change of format. There's a little bit more written text. Um, and, uh, we were going to be probably getting rid of the, let's see if we actually have one here, these statements here. So the historic plan supports the implementation of the land use plan for its highlight of historic context. And the reason why we were going to take these out of here, these support statements, is because there is going to be a written chapter, which we'll get to in you know hopefully half an hour or so. We'll come back when we're done with the implementation strategy. We'll go back and talk about the chapter structures. In the chapter structures, we talk about these pieces. And so we don't think they need to be in the implementation strategy themselves. Um, so there's a chance we could in the same way that we've got these over here um, that talk about G1, G2, G3, we could in the goals go through and have a section over here where it says what other goals are supported. So it may be something, there may be a different code. We'd have to have a, a code for, as you're switching from historic to energy, you know, if you're supporting the energy plan, then it would have like an E. So this goal supports this, uh, you know, what goals it might support goal E5 from the energy plan or T6 from the transportation plan. Um, and that would be another option. I don't know if we have to do that. Again, it comes back down to those cards. And is there, is it, is it useful? Is there some, is there value gained by doing it? I don't know. I wasn't going to worry too much about it at this point. It is in the written text of the, of the, of the working documents. So I thought those are good pieces of, of information um, there that we can always go back to them if we want to add it in. But for now, I wanted to kind of keep it basic um, and talk about these. Um, so I, have a, I have a question. Yeah, keep it on the, the goals page here. Um, 
so so the CNS working group, everyone was was fine with phrasing the goals like this. Because I'm thinking of the, you know, we'll be using this as a template. So um, for for the other chapters to have the goals that are these these goals to me don't seem like very measurable. Um, I know we've had just we've had discussions of things like that. Um, but every, everyone was good with like things like improve the city's understanding of its historic. I don't, I don't believe that we've talked about that as a committee, about the general form of the goals. I, I mean, I see what you mean. I just don't think we've considered it before outside of considering it at when we considered this chapter as a group. Okay. I mean So is it important that those goals be measurable? Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to go back and see if other chapters have measurable goals. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I mean there's I, just a difference between the, the goals and the benchmarks and I think there there are bench they're supposed to have benchmarks to go with the goals. But, you know, taking a step back, um, you know, the original intent is that we have the aspiration and we'll go back when we go to the parks, we'll have more of a discussion. This one's a really simple aspiration, so there's not much to, to pick apart. But the goals are supposed to be taking what is, you know, a, a, a more visionary aspiration and breaking it into bite-sized pieces. So, um, you know, and maybe it's, it is easier to look at a different in a different chapter, but in this case, you know, we really want to break down that aspiration into some goals, so that way we've got some concrete pieces um, and, and, and an understanding of how we're doing. So this is improve the city's understanding. So um, you know, inferring into that, you know, uh, uh, we're not maintaining our understanding. We, we clearly have more that we need to do, and so they've got a lot of studies that. In this case, the Historic Preservation Commission is looking to do because we've got a whole lot of the city that has never been surveyed for historic resources. Um, and then increasing the community's appreciation and continuing and improving upon the protection because we've got pretty good protections of historic resources. But we have a few small areas that they wanted to improve upon. Um, now, I think what would happen after that is to kind of go through and where appropriate, apply a benchmark. Um, to kind of go through and say, okay, well, what what is this, what does that mean over the next, you know, um, eight years? You know, how would we Do you mean using the strategies as a benchmark or something separate? It would be something. It would be something separate. Um, the the benchmarks in in the plans themselves are, you know, where appropriate they've kind of appeared under it. So I think in, you know, in housing. There's um, a goal of increasing the amount of housing, and there's a benchmark of, of adding 250 housing units over the next eight years, or 240 units over the next eight years. So there's a specific benchmark that goes to, when we talk about increasing, what do we mean by increasing? We're talking about adding 240, so um, you know, how are we doing towards getting to that goal? Okay. It, I seem to remember Stephanie and John having opinions on the measurability of things. Um, does anyone else have a view um, or is what we're looking at okay? I'm back. I apologize. I missed a piece of that. But um, in terms of the benchmark marks, Kirby? Um, if, like stating the goals that like in a... Um, kind of an unmeasurable way, like if, if that's the approach we plan to take or uh, whether, you know, the planning commission has a preference for phrasing them, like building the benchmarks okay. into the goal so that it's measurable. I think, I think that's the route that I would advocate for. Yes, that it's something that we can track over time and see if we're making progress. I'm not so remembering what the discussion was with John. So yeah, it would so certainly way, be possible we, to do that with these goals, um, put, attach a benchmark to them without necessarily changing the wording of the goal as it stands. Right? 
Yeah, because what we're trying to do with the implementation strategy is really start to lay out a, a deliberate, um, clear, a clear set of goals and some deliberate actions to achieve to achieve goals. And the benchmarks are really measuring measuring that success. I haven't had them here in in the implementation strategies, but what we did have a little bit of a, a discussion of. Um, at the, the CNS committee subcommittee was to kind of start talking about whether that makes sense to get those into the the written chapters because I think that's where they're going to be the most effective is oh. if we have a a chapter that is written up. Let me back. here very slowly all right so the draft chapters are talking about you know and we'll get into this more in a little bit but there's an introduction and how it relates to other chapters so again that um, that section that we talked about removing those things where it's like well we you know, this chapter supports that chapter. Well, we're going to talk about it in text. So we really don't have to have it as a strategy. And I think the same is true when we get in here to the maps. And one thing that we're going to add to this, you know, are probably going to be maps and tables. And part of the tables is going to probably be where we, where we would have these benchmarks. So a piece of this that we we talked a very short amount with that we'll probably get back to for the for the um, CNS com subcommittee was this is this chapter is all meant to be part of the website and it's going to have a written text um, even though this is kind of broken out as maps and tables there's not like a separate section on maps and tables they're kind of integrated into the discussion um, of, of where it's appropriate. So if we're talking about something, if we're talking about historic districts, and it's probably going to be the map that's showing you where our historic district is, or, um, um, you know, if we're talking about protecting the design review, then we're probably going to show the map of the design review. So we've got these pieces that would be embedded. And at the end, um, you know, because the the plan has to be a fixed document. And this is where we kind of had a really quick discussion of we'll have to talk to a lawyer and talk about how much flexibility we have, or do we just do something? Um, because benchmarks are dynamic, we may have to have like this whole plan that's fixed, then a line, and then we can have a dynamic se section that said, you know, this really isn't officially part of the plan, but these are our benchmarks. Um, and it might, might come after we have a brief introduction to our aspirations and goals, so we have this little introduction, then there's going to be a line, then there's going to be something of benchmarks. We can go through and say, hey, how are we doing on accomplishing our goals? Um, well, we have three benchmarks for this. You know, we have a benchmark for, you know, um, developing two new historic districts in the city in the next eight years or wh whatever, whatever we're trying to do, or we want to be able to have two outreach efforts every single year. And then you can have a thing, how many outreach efforts were done, um, you know, how many walking tours were done, how much of these were done. So that way we can kind of uh, mark out the progress of how we're doing on each of our, on our things. And then, but that would be a dynamic website that we could then go through and make updates over the eight year plan to keep it up to date. Um, but knowing that plans have to be fixed documents, you can only change it by an amendment process. I think we'd have to have some way of having a demarcation in the plan that would go through and say, you know, beyond this point is our, our benchmarks. Um, above this is a static fixed document that can't change without. Um, could, could we just resolve this by, you know, we, we, we passed the plan with the set parts and just have a website where we say, you know, 
as, you know, you know where, where we where we have at Benchmarks, we have a, a dynamic thing that we can update and change. As, as long as that website is clear that you know this is the planning commission's evolve or the or the planning staffs. I don't know. If we want to control that, Mike. But you know, this is a suggested way of viewing it from you know this other third party. Um, yeah, I mean, I think what is going to get adopted is going to be, you know, people are going to go through and review the website. Um, we're, we're trying to not have a written text. We may have to have some PDF hidden somewhere for legal reasons, but the idea is that we would, people would actually go through and adopt the, the, the version that's on the web. Um, and then we would just explain that, you know, here's, here's where it is. Maybe there's a change in some format or font or something that would clearly make a demarcation for um, leading us into the benchmarks and the um, progress of implementation. Yeah, I like progress of implementation. I think that that, just, you know, that I think that that communicates that this is not part of the plan and it's just, a, you know, helpful addition. So it becomes a measure of how well we're reaching the goals. It's a, it's a target to shoot for, right? Yes. In each case. Um, yeah. So how would it have to change? I mean, if we set a target that says in eight years, we're going to have, you know, two, um, two more programs to um, identify the pub, identify historic resources. Why would that have to change necessarily? I'm not sure I'm following you. You said that that the um, any benchmarks would have to be um, interactive, that they would be changing over time. Not right? the benchmarks so much, Barb. It would be the we would update progress. It'd be like a like someone would be able to see your benchmark and then where you were on your way to to getting there. Well, yeah, okay, because we don't want to wait eight years to find out the results. Right, um, and the benchmark but, itself wouldn't change. Right, okay, all right. That's what I was worried about is that somehow these benchmarks were going to be fluid um, items. Um, it just seems like we could have some kind of a, um, some kind of a document that could track that. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm trying to grapple with whether or not that means that it has to sit outside of the plan because it's in, because it changes. Um, and the, the plan has to be a static document. Is that what you're saying, Mike, that it has to be static? Yeah, the plan has to be static. Um, and I think just the difference between the goals and the benchmarks is just, you know, there may be some other strategies that we are taking that may be either more generic, um, you know, being a part of the designated downtown or having certain policies, they're all meant to help us get to the goals. And if we get to our goals, we, we achieve our aspirations and our visions. And that's, that's what it is. And, and so, you know, not every goal is going to have a benchmark. Uh, you know, we don't want to get you know, certain things just don't lend themselves to benchmarks. You know, education and outreach can be tough. How, how are we going to, you know, we want, we want to increase the, the community's appreciation of historic resources. That's a really hard thing to measure. And, you know, we could tie ourselves into knots trying to figure out how we're going to measure that. Or we can just go through and say, hey, we're going to do so many outreach episodes. Um, you know, and is that really a benchmark? I don't know if I would track it as a benchmark. But certain other things do very clearly um, lend themselves to benchmarks, whether it's increasing the amount of housing, uh, whether it's the energy plan wanting to achieve um, 20, 30 net zero for the, for the city. Um, you know, this plan is going to run through 2030, so we should be able to have a benchmark. You know, we have a goal and we have a clear benchmark 
now we could have a very dynamic graph that just grabs from whatever MIAC is producing and just links it into this um, final web page. So we'd have the plan explaining the energy chapter and then a benchmark afterwards that kind of goes through and says, okay, you know, tracking ourselves over time, how are we doing? And so it could be updated annually. Um, and some of the other ben other benchmarks might be updated annually as well. Yep. If there's something that, that makes sense, it could be, you know, an economic development plan might, you know, and then we'd have a very specific reference, you know, um, you know, if we want to increase the amount of, um, uh, hospitality, you know, we want to increase the hospitality sector of our economy. I can go through and grab the UI number and stick it in there and that's unemployment insurance. Um, and just go through and track that over time. If we want to increase the number of jobs in that category, we currently have this many. That number we should be establishing and do going and doing strategies that increase that number. Um, if that was our goal, um, but we, we'd have to just find out what the number yeah, is so to, to plug mm -hmm. in. Every year, I go in and plug uh, update the website. So, so Mike, um, I'm a little concerned about having too many layers to it. I think that that could be confusing for especially the public who are trying to understand, um, but any user really, um, you know, cause we have goals, we have benchmarks, we have strategies, we have, like all these different layers and people are like, well, what's, what's what, uh, what means what, um, would it just be possible? I mean, we could have goals, some of which are unmeasurable and open-ended, but the things that we would uh, create as benchmarks, why not just make them strategies? And so then the strategies are all of those things that are hopefully more measurable. The and maybe, maybe we'll the, make them exceptions. The, I mean, the, the goals you could make into benchmarks um, it kind of changes the format on things, but it wouldn't be a strategy. Your strategy are your action steps. So you can't have a strategy of being net zero by 2030 because that's not an action step. That's not doing something. That's just, that's a goal. Um, so it would, if we we're going to add benchmarks in, they would go in under the goals. Um, cause, because your strategies are, okay, how are we going to get to net zero? We're going to have to but do a bunch of stuff. Um, we still run into that dynamic aspect that we'd like to have this updated on a regular basis so people know where they are, where we are in that, in that goal. Um, so it would change, hopefully yeah, annually. And that's why it really wouldn't go into this. That's why I was trying to keep it out of the implementation strategy. I thought the implementation strategy, this piece that we're looking at here, does its job okay? Um, uh, because we really, what we're talking about are the, the big picture of what's our aspiration, what are our goals, and then how are we going to accomplish those goals? And so one thing we needed the, the planning commission to kind of approve is, are you okay with this structure for the strategies? This fact that, you know, we're giving it a title. Um, and maybe I'll, let me, let me just jump over one here. Um, cause it makes a little bit more of a difference when I look at parks because we had talked about parks. So, um, this is what they had shown last time. And I went down and started to do my ideas using that same format. So what we did for the green print in collapsing things is we collapsed. Remember the, there used to be a green print plan, a green print implementation, and then a green print fund. Well, we collapsed those all into one green print implementation program, you know, that, you know, the city has had the green print plan since 2014 to guide the purchase of lands. The parks uh, are looking to formalize and expand that these to better accomplish the city goals. A revised plan is needed to ensure the future of parks within 10, 15 minutes, add river access, and these are basically all pulling out of those other things, identify, um, add more details of parks, act park access, identify possible connectors, 
ensure natural resources identified in high conservation areas are included. A funding component of the program requires formalization of the specific strategies to raise the funds for purchase. And finally, the purchase component will require a policy by city council to prioritize objectives and then strategically acquire parcels and rights. So that collapsed a whole bunch into, into one. Um, Mike, do we, do we need that much information? I mean, do we have to explain what the green print plan is? Wouldn't that be something that might be included in the written chapter? Just to say that, okay, for parks, we have a green print plan and this is what's tended to do. And uh, uh, so that the only thing that needs to go into this strategy, because this is a strategy level, right? Um, are your numbered um, pieces. Uh, yeah, the ones that start, it starts with number one and goes on from there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and this is what we were talking about at the at the uh, subcommittee level was, you know, I can't go through and make all of these chapters, plug all these chapters into this, this format until we approve the format. So one of the questions that you guys are going to have to decide is, is having this longer text okay? As we collapsed what were 20 something strategies, um, I got it down to 11. And then while we were all sitting together, we decided that the 10 minute policy and the 15 minute walk policy really aren't policies at all. Those are really benchmarks. So we pulled them out. Um, we also combined the park maintenance program with the parks management plan, I think think um, because really the, the management plan is telling them what to do and the maintenance plan is basically implementation of that plan. So we combine those two. So we had a couple of these, you get the idea. We had a couple of these mm -hmm. and I think the multi-use trail is also merged with the green print. So if we're going to merge these together and still keep the spirit of what the parks commission wants to do, because the parks commission does want to do this study but we're going to put that study in as part of the green print, we really would have to include some text up here so that way that idea is not lost. Um, so that's yeah, why yeah. this does I, get a little work. That's why I'm saying it could start with number one, ensure locations of future parks. Um, but anyway, without all the explanation about the green print. But I think just, it, there's not a lot about the green print on the Parks Commission website, just the link to the document. I don't I don't think it's a bad thing to have a little intro. I mean, we're going to need it in things like certified local government anyways, the more complicated things. Shouldn't that be within the written chapter portion, though? No, because get... I, I don't think, I think people aren't going to read the written chapter first. I think they're going to read the strategies first and the goals first. And if Especially... they really want to dive in, they'll go to the written chapter. Yeah, since we're setting it up for the in this cards type format where people can maybe browse through it, they may not actually have the cross reference right in front of them. So yeah, I think they need to stand as independently as possible while being brief as possible. But this doesn't strike me as like overly long. I would have a hard time reading through it, but. Um, well, yeah, it's not one. formatted. I mean, we'll format it later. This is just an Excel document. Yeah, I, that, that was a piece that I was struggling with a little bit is that some of these get a little lengthy. And I think this one in particular, there's a lot of this that we can really delve into in a more detailed way within the chapter, which is that's that's how I would envision it and not, mm -hmm. not necessarily going into this level of detail here. But yeah. to explain that we're going to update it and what the thought is, but not... But really, I think I think the more detailed information could be in the chapter. That was how I was picturing it. We could probably also shorten this just by keeping all the same information, but making it more succinct, maybe. Yeah, and I didn't know somewhat how much flexibility I had. So some of these are numbered. So, you know, could I could I hit a carriage return? But of course, in Excel, once you start hitting carriage returns, it boots you to the next cell. So, you know, you can't go through and make a numbered list. You know, um, is that something that can get worked around, you know, 
using some format keys that I can go through and, and you know really clean this up. It might lengthen it in length, but it may not add more words, but it might organize it better if it was in you know a list. Or that would a, certainly or, help, yes. Um, but before I got in too much, what I wanted to be able to do was to just show you know, you saw the, the historic and you saw the park. So again, um, while they had collapsed into five when we met last time, two weeks ago, you know, I collapsed it down to about maybe nine or eight um, in doing mine. So um, I think we can collapse these down. Um, and I think it's it'll be helpful, but when we collapse them down, there'll be text. And I haven't written in anything here. I still have to add in all the written parts for these. Um, there was a conversation about whether parks volunteer program and whether that would be a part of the parks maintenance program. I don't, you know, I think we could do some some other ones, but I thought that was kind of a distinct piece that we would keep separate. And But again, this will come down to how much, you know, once we've got it here, we can all start working with it. Then it's more wordsmithing and yeah. making some tweaks. Can I ask a question about that? I'm trying. Where sh where should we be focusing our energy right now? Like, is it in the wordsmithing and this is too long and the formatting is weird, or is it like, can we just bypass that for now, get words on the document, and then once we have it all, worry about these? What I I'm kind of considering those fairly minor, but perhaps I am not. Um focusing correctly right now. No, you're focusing correctly. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. So, so my, uh, I think my primary piece, when I worked with the committees to put these together, we always started with the same thing, and that was to look at the aspirations and look at the goals. Um, you know, those are the two big steps to start with. You know, is this what we are trying to do. If that's not what we're trying to do, you know, if you don't want to start with the strategies and work your way back to the aspirations. You really want to start with the aspirations and say, is this what we're trying to do? Is this what we want to do? Is this our vision? Because, and sometimes that's the hardest question to answer. Right. You know, what is it? What is it we want to see? Um, you know, and, and the transportation committee was a good example. You know, what do you guys want? You know, is it no cars in the downtown? Is it electric cars? Is it, you know, what's what's the goal? Because we can't start plugging in strategies until we know that we are all talking about a common vision. Um, and now we can come through here and tweak, you know, we've talked about maybe we need to tweak this. Maybe in Montpelier, our parks are a vibrant part of everyday life. And then maybe this is more a descriptor. Maybe that's not really part of the aspiration, that 10-minute walk and that 15-minute walk. You know, maybe those really aren't part of the aspiration. And I, I know we talked a little bit about maybe those get taken out because those really are more benchmarks to say, you know, how how are parks more a vibrant part of our everyday life? Well, they're a more vibrant part when we are within a 10-minute walk and we are within a 15-minute walk. So maybe those are benchmarks. And then, you know, we're back to another part of the aspiration, the system of interconnected parks and greenways that enhances opportunities for all people of all ages and abilities and moves throughout the city and safe routes, connects to nature and ourselves. Um, residents and visitors understand our park resources and how to act responsibly. Um, and lastly, our parks protect the natural integrity of future generations by owning and maintaining certain irreplaceable features in natural communities. And that last piece reflects the fact that the parks connect to the, the conservation commission does not own any land so when the conservation commission says hey we should buy this because it's really a rare um, habitat and the city should add it to the park system well we need the the parks plan to reflect that sometimes the parks are buying things not for recreational purposes but for conservation and preservation purposes um, yeah, I that's helpful, and I would really like. Us, I would like to focus on those. I feel like, I mean, part of it is that I'm not. Yet we, I am not yet on a subcommittee that has, kind of delved into one chapter specifically like, transportation, um, 
but I do, I kind of feel like that's not the conversation. The conversations we've been having together have not been this high level aspiration. Is this what we want to do? Kind of question. They've been um, much more around structure and wordsmith, and that's at least from my perspective. So I would really I would really like to have these conversations about the aspirations as a group. Well, for one reason, we were doing aspirations and the goals. Uh, Marcel, I mean, one thing about like in defense, um, in, in, in defense of the approach so far, it's it's so that our work when we when we split up and we do work, we want we don't want to go in opposite directions. Like, so we're trying to get all on the same page about about the structure and stuff. And and I do think the structure is important in that how people digest or or take in the information is just as important as the information of whether or not this is going to be a successful plan. But all along, it's been this. This is the preliminary part to get this out of the way, and uh, you know, policy is going to be. We're going to be going through the policy of it in every meeting as we as we start to approve um, the chapters. Um, what were you going to say, Bart? And we already have. I mean, we've gone through the process as several different times for transportation when before we had the structure. So now having the structure certainly redirects everything that's been done. So um, that's why it's really helpful to start with deciding that this is the structure we want and then going from there for the individual chapters. Because we've probably done maybe five different um, iterations of transportation so far. Um, yeah, so, okay. Yeah. From yeah. So, from my my standpoint, as I'm trying to, you know, put my put my um, get get to work on things, I would like to be able to start plugging these things in, you know, in, in this way and filling in these documents. But again, if we think that the aspirations and goals are going to change, then I really shouldn't put too much work into the into the strategies because if if people don't agree that these are our goals, then some of these strategies may go away. Um, I'm kind of hoping that we're we're doing you know we're going to end up getting into the aspirations and goals and doing more wordsmithing, um, but things will kind of not change too much. Has kind of been my, I, my as far thought, as wordsmithing by the that, way. I, I see wordsmithing as, you know, we, we've made major decisions and the wordsmithing is, you know, just trying to polish it. I actually see that as like the last thing we do. Um, like so far, I mean, I, maybe we've here and there done some like wordsmithing on things, but I, I feel like we've mostly been concerned with structure so far. And then we've touched on policy here and there. And the wordsmithing we've done so far, I feel like is not actually wordsmithing is actually like policy decisions. Like, do we want to include that thing? Not like, can we word it better? I don't feel like we've actually done any wordsmithing as a group. Some of us individually have like wordsmith some things and, and you know, sent them around. But um, I feel like that that should come last. And I feel like maybe we should though. I mean, and uh, I haven't actually talked to Mike about this. So it's a good thing to maybe you should mention briefly is, I mean, I'm envisioning Mike's going to write everything up according to what we talk about. Um, so near the very end, we that's when we might want to go in and if we want to phrase things differently. Because I recall Mike admitting many times that he doesn't view himself as a masterwork writer. So I'm sure he'll invite some of the that wordsmithing at the end. Yeah, and we certainly want to do that. And I, th I think what we want at the start, you know, again, I think we had gone through this with the initial set of, of plans was, you know, the aspirations are meant to be just that kind of visionary. And these goals are really the pieces that kind of break that up. And I think there's some goals missing in here from parks, but I'll, I have to go through and and uh, double check them and make sure they're all in here. But, um, you know, really the idea is, you know, is 
how did the how did that committee do? Um, you know, this is the the committee. Um, they put things together um, to try to capture. And if you have to break this into sentences and um, and take each sentence as its own piece and go and decide whether or not you agree with it, and then we can decide how to how to word it and, and reword it. But really, the idea is: have we got the ideas down? You know, did you know, is, does the Parks Commission not have any idea what they're doing with parks? You know, one would hope that the Parks Commission is, is going to have a fairly good idea of what the parks, their vision for the parks is. So. Okay, so the next thing you're supposed to talk about is chapter structure. But before we move on to that, I just want to make sure that everyone's okay and clear about um, the approach that's being taken here, which as I understand is, you know, we're, we're collapsing things, we're using the spreadsheet, that's the format that we're going to approach the implementation strategies with. And we want to use historic resources and the parks because they've had the most work so far as the templates when we do other work on this. Is everyone in a general, just generally okay with all of that? Okay. So that's what that's what we're doing. That's what how we'll, we'll proceed with that. Um, yeah, and I my, think that if the subcommittees, as you meet, if you do have subcommittees and you are meeting, to try to focus on that aspirations and goals. If you want to get into the strategies, um, that's fine. I haven't collapsed them, and I will collapse them. Don't spend your time collapsing them. I will do that. Um, what's most important is to get through the aspirations and goals. Um, and we will get to the strategies, either get to the strategies afterwards, or if you're looking at the actual written text of your, you know, going, going through the written part, you might be able to go through and say, you know, I think they missed a strategy or I don't think that strategy is going to be effective. Um, and that's fine, but I will take care of making the tab for strategies. Once we have as a planning commission said, yes, the aspirations and goals are good then I can go in and, and make this Excel collapse everything down. And then you guys can go back in and say, okay, now I see these things um, collapsed from 25 strategies into 10. Okay. So, so it seems like we're all, we're all good. We're all on the same page with that. It seems like we've, we have gone over this a lot. So um Seems like we we know where we're going. Barb, did you have something? Yeah, Kirby, I, I realize this isn't exactly part of our agenda, but because it's been so difficult, is it possible before we end the meeting tonight to set up some subcommittee, or excuse me, task force meetings? Because just establishing those meetings has been a challenge. Is that possible? Um, if we have time at the end, if not- yeah. um, Just do it if, if we have time. If, yeah, um, if not, we can um, all just, you know, commit to paying it, like doing it on by email afterwards. Okay, um, never mind. We'll just commit to doing it. The, uh, okay, so the, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the chapter structure, and uh, it's a similar, similar concept here. The CNS Working Group, we've been working with Mike, and we have the historic and we have the energy chapters. Um, so, uh, Mike, will you summarize uh, the chapter structure that we're thinking of doing here? Yeah, so I tried to get some bite-sized pieces. And again, just, just at this stage, you know, I had wrote up a little stuff for an introduction. My goal was to make the entire chapter 1,000 to 1,500 words. Um, we're trying to be a website. We're not trying to write a 500-page city plan. We really want to be um, telling people what's important, what is interesting. You know, if somebody wants to know, you know, what is, what are historic resources, what's important, why is it important, that's really what we're trying to get at here. Um, you know, as a state capital, Montpelier has a unique arrangement with the state government capital complex and blah, blah, blah. So it really kind of touches on some of the basics. Um, and then, and none of these chapters are necessarily meant to, can I, we could go through and say, hey, this should be last and the other thing should be moved up. 
we can rearrange them. I was just looking for a couple of topics. We would have a short chunk on um, introduction, a short chunk discussing how whatever it is, energy, historic resources relates to other chapters, um, a summary of information about Montpelier. So um, maybe we put in web links to all of these different things. Um, that's a little bit left to be determined. I don't know how to keep this from getting too out of hand, but we can kind of figure that out as we go along. But there should be some section that kind of summarizes most of the information um, that we know. Um, there's maybe not a section on maps and tables, as I had discussed earlier. I think the maps and tables would kind of get integrated into the chapter. Um, but these were, I wanted to list out what were the map layers we would need in order to write a good historic resources chapter. We would want to show somewhere in here, where's the capital complex boundaries? Um, maybe where the location of historic markers maybe the location of the design review overlay district. Um, well, probably definitely the, that, and definitely the design designated downtown district, national register district. Um, and then there'd be a chapter because if people were reading the chapter rather than necessarily going into and um, trying to read and understand the cards, we would just give a brief you know, in this case, three paragraph introduction of what's our aspirations and goals. And then again, about three paragraphs on how we're gonna implement those goals. Maybe we don't do these, maybe we leave that for people to kind of mine in, but we kind of take that, um, you know, we can talk about that a little bit. And then again, we just talked about maybe the benchmarks. And I'm just gonna run out really quick here and take care of my dog. Okay. So I'll be back in a second. <laughs> So the committee thought that the this like structure was decent, but Mike's questions to us were like, is there um, anything that shouldn't be there or anything that we're missing from this list or these sections? Oh. Well, and for me going over the energy um, chapter, because that's the one I know, um, I did think that there are a couple of things that would be really helpful to me, particularly in the chapters I don't know. Um, one of which being what work has been completed to date. You know, for example, we have a green print plan is something that has worked to date on the parks. And for the energy plan, it's we have, you know, already reduced our energy because we've done these various steps just so that because this is for the public and they don't know the, the topics as well as we do that we really want to go and sort of start from the basics um also one of the things that i came kind of came up against was was what's the role of the city um in some of this for example we might want to have a parking section but it really isn't up to the city to determine how many parking spaces we have or where they go. Um, so some of this is not, is outside the purview of the plan. Um, and then finally, one of the things on the energy plan was that, um, you know, I think for the public, we're going to get into trouble if we talk about a wait, having any section that says, well, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, and so that's the kind of thing I think we need to make either clear statements um, or leave it out. What was the wait and see what happens? What do you mean by that? Uh, had to do with, um, with residential uh, becoming a net zero residentially by 2050. Um, and so, you know, that is there, the city does have a role there. They may not be able to, you know, legislate it, but there certainly are, are role aspects. It's down near the bottom if you're scrolling through that section. Uh, I don't think I could, nope, I can't do that. Um, it's actually even, okay. Yeah, and some of these come down to what we're, what we are doing in the next range of time. Um, so we're talking about an eight year plan and, um, a majority of the effort that is going on, and you know, again, this is this is here for for you know 
edits and comments. But the, the, the reason that kind of came up was, um, let's take, for example, eliminating vehicle fossil fuels by 2050. Even the Energy Committee, when we're talking to them, is that you know we can do some small things. I mean, we can reduce things a little bit, um, but we're really waiting for technology. You know, we're waiting for the federal government to you know really ramp up and get things going on electric vehicles. You know, we can't even encourage people to get the electric vehicles at this point. Um, and if we're putting most of our energy in, you know, we've got an energy committee, we've got a 2030 sitting energy goal, um, you know, to get city government to be net zero. That's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of, of time and effort. So for us to then go and try to spend additional effort to get to net zero vehicles, it's kind of like, well, why don't we wait until electric vehicles are really gearing up and then we can start to go through, you know, there are things to do. We want to get more charging stations out there. We want to, um, you know, uh, increase the ability to bike and walk so that way people are using less. But, it, you know, that's that's not getting us to net zero. Get, getting people to walk and bike is not going to get us to net zero. Getting people to use microtransit is not getting us to net zero. It's reducing the amount that we use, but it's not getting us to net zero. Uh, we're not getting to net zero until there's a technology shift. And that technology shift is not happening in the lifespan of this plan. So let's let's de-emphasize this, knowing it, it, that it is a goal, and emphasize these three goals, which are um, the things we can work on. Um, and I think there was a little bit of, of, you know, from the strategic point of a strategic plan, of this is where we should put our muscle for the next eight years. Right um, now, but if we don't lay the groundwork for the 2050 goal, then we'll never get there. I thought part of this was to, to do the net zero implementation plan to hire a consultant in order to do that. Yeah, and the uh, consultant is doing the 2030 goals. Only the 2030. Not the 2050 goals. But only yes. the 2030 for the city? Or, sorry, for municipal or for anything related to yes. the rest of the city? Nothing related to nope. the rest of the city. Well, it, yeah, I think there's a, a hole there. Because um, we can't and, just and wait. And the reason why is just because it's it, there's a whole set of things that need whole set of questions that need to be answered, and this is a time window that you know, frankly, is, is less than nine years away now. And getting right. there is going to be, um, you know, we still need to know, you know, answers to, um, you know, what does what does a net zero fire truck look like? What does a net zero snow plow look like? How much does that cost? How much does that cost differ from a standard diesel operating vehicle? Um, what does that mean for um, other pieces of equipment or for electrical use? Um, or for heating buildings that are not on the net, on, on the district heat? You know, what do we, when we talk about the senior center, um, that's not on district heat. So how are we getting that net zero? Isn't that already wood chip? Um, there are a lot of Isn't it pellet? I don't know. Like I said, yeah. there are a number of buildings, and, and maybe that one already is, but there are a number of, of ones that we've got a lot of questions to answer, and that's why the focus of that, that was on. And, and again, if you look at the strategies, the strategies for how we take care of ourselves as government, I'm saying me, me the government, um, <laughs> are different than the public because we don't have to pass regulations to change our own behavior. Um, we just have to have a policy that says we're going to change our behavior. Um, when we start dealing with the public, then it becomes really hard. It's something different. How do we, you know, you know how do we stop somebody from using a coal wood stove or, you know, to heat their building? You know, that's, okay. that's hard. That's a hard okay. question. To answer. How do we get them to stop doing that? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm hearing feedback from this meeting that, you know, folks want to make sure that we're like moving along orderly. Um, this is actually a policy discussion. I don't want to like squash the policy discussion, but at the same time, we're, we're looking at this right now to see if we're in agreement about the chapter structure because, and, and the reason why I want to like squash this for a second is just, we're going to do the policy meeting on the energy chapter and have this discussion. 
but um, for now, let's focus on is this is this the structure that we want for all of the chapters? And I think the question is, I mean, everything that, like everything that we could possibly want to say, does it fit into these the way that this is uh, you know broken out? Well, I've already given my opinion on that, Kirby. So yeah, well, you know, so Barbie, yeah, structure wise, like um, I, I think it would be really helpful if we had. I mean, I don't want to be rigid about this, but if we had some idea of here are the headings that should be covered in each one of the chapters. Yeah, that's that's and, listed out, and that's what I would really like to see, and that some of those, in in general, would it would sort of start with a, um, you know, more general statement about here, this is the scope of the chapter and this is the work that's been done to, to date, those kinds of things. And um, sort of in that process, in that, um, in a very determined structure. So, yeah, my understanding is this is like my, like these chapters are models for a determined structure. Is that correct, Mike? Not yeah. energy. So again, just like, just like we talked about with historic, we've got an introduction. We've got how does the energy plan relate to other chapters? We have a summary of information. This still has to get populated, obviously. We would have a set of maps that would get integrated in. And this, again, I think, especially for this, and tables, because I think there's going to be, um, especially for the energy, a number of, of tables that would go in. Um, and then we would discuss the aspirations and goals now um, in an outline of the implementation approaches. Now, I think the question now is, do we want to talk about the outline of implementation? Um, do we want to, am I, am, is there something else that's missing? Um, because if I have the headers, I can fill in other chapters. Um, is, so Barb, maybe we can answer that today. So yeah, Barb, 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 is there something lacking in these headings? Pardon me? Barb suggested that one heading to add was work done to date or sort of a snapshot of where we are already. So that could could be in the introduction, but if we wanted to make sure that was added to everything, that should be added as a new heading, I think. I, I, I think the summarized information about Montpelier is where that would go. But it doesn't. But anyway. Um, would it be useful like it, if... It doesn't currently, because, uh, yeah, Mike was saying right, he hasn't right. completed that section. Well, no, I don't mean that. Um, it Would it be helpful if if I took that energy chapter and, and just kind of using Mike's basis here and rearranged it so that it made more sense to me? Um, would that be helpful? And then you could take a look at it because the structure will be very clear. Um, okay, so a couple of things like we as a group right now, we're trying to decide like what is the template going to be if you're talking about like like reorganizing this and creating new headings, then are well, that's, you losing that for every chapter that we do that? Well, I'm just saying let's yeah, I mean, I'm going to propose some headings and um, maybe that's, you know, it doesn't mean that the chapter, you know, that I have to read revise the chapter to fit all these parts in. But um, I just think it would be helpful to me and certainly to the public if if there was a some more clear headings um, in this. And then um, it's also makes it more possible for Mike to sort of insert the information at the appropriate place. Well, Barbara, are you prepared right now to just tell us what, what you've what headings you'd like to replace and have new headings for? Okay. Um, the first one is on the introduction. Um, I think it would be, if it could be shorter, but I think it would really be helpful to include the history of the committee or who's, you know, basically the committee is putting together these goals and aspirations. So, um, a little bit more about you know who they are, where they're coming from, um, because the city, I mean the public, certainly doesn't know that. Um, kind of an overall general statement of the scope of the chapter, 
Um, and maybe within that, uh, what the city's role is in this chapter, because within, even within the parks, there are certain, certain parts that, you know, we might think are a really good idea, like we should be able to, you know, have our walking trails on con all connected, but the aspect of the fact that some of these are on private land um, doesn't lend itself to that. So I think, you know, so that people don't bring up comments after the fact about, well, why didn't you include this when it's something that's way outside what the city can even accomplish? Um, and then, as I said before, the work completed to date, I mean, just a bullet list, for example, in the Energy Committee of all of the things that have done, done already on a municipal standpoint. And then um, I think the, uh, on the conclusion, and I think, you know, maybe this is what Mike's getting to is that what do we want to achieve in eight years? Um, and ultimately, of course, that's what the benchmarks tell us. But it's not, you know, and this is basically just in a more verbal and maybe more vision related um, standpoint. So sort of anyway, that's those were the first things that came to mind when I was um, reading through the energy chapter. It, it seems like we could fit those things into what the headings Mike's proposed, like to include that information information just using these headings but uh mike do you have anything to say yeah uh, i guess it like i said it depends whether we're talking about these as new headers or whether we're talking about these as as making changes within the existing framework that we have i think is uh, she's saying she's saying like new like uh, and replacing some of the existing ones. That's my understanding. My understanding is that, Barb, tell me if this is wrong. My understanding is that just in the introduction, you would like to see a couple of things, specific things. And then in the um, uh, summarize information about Montpelier, you want to also see a list of work that's been done. And then in the introduction to implementation oh. approaches, you want to see a narrative of what, what do we want to achieve in eight years? Actually, I would rather see the headings because then I know when I'm looking at what's been done to date for every chapter, after I read what's been done to date for every chapter, I'll have a pretty good idea where we are, where we're starting from. Yeah, uh, I could without see having to read the whole thing. I could see that that one being its own new heading. That makes sense to me. Um, I have a couple of thoughts about the other. You know what the city's role is. I understand what you're what you're saying, and and I think it's good to be clear with the public about what the city can do. But I also think that if there's something that the city can't do, it should not be in the plan. And if we need to be clear about this is going to take partnership, we be clear. We're we're clear about this is going to take partnership. I don't. I don't. I'm having a hard time understanding how a government would write a sentence of like, oh, but the city is. Uh, not, we, we can't do that without sounding like jerks. <laughs> like, well, like that's not our no, job. Like people aren't right. going to be okay with that. But our so, intention, for example, our intention is to create a trail system, recognizing. But we're recognizing the fact that many of these existing trails are on private property. And yeah. therefore we cannot call, you know, we cannot determine, we cannot make them part of our trail system. Yeah. I think example. we say much of, much of Montpelier is public private property. This will require partnerships. We don't <laughs> say the, the city can't do that. Like there's just some word, that's some wordsmithing stuff, but I, I get your point is that we need to be clear in the, objectives and benchmarks especially if we're going to be updating those of like is it going to be who's going to do it and is it going to take partnerships and that way if we get to the end and we haven't connected you know the trails we can just say you know well there were no partnerships or you know it wasn't just like well it's not our job right people weren't willing to do it right yes so yeah. the, the partnerships didn't happen i think there's ways we can be clear about that in the writing 
Um, and then in terms of who the committee is, I off the cuff feel that we can link to their page. I don't think we need major in detail. People don't care. Have, <laughs> I think we don't need to looked, introduce have the committee. Have you looked at their pages? Uh, that's are, their problem. That's the committee's problem. They can no, add no, stuff no. to their... Oh, no, no, no. That is, that's a city-generated page. So no, it's not something... No, I know that. I've, but they can ask to add stuff if they want. Like, yeah, I don't think I, you need to be introducing everybody to these, you know, the telephone tree that created our plan. People are... It's one plan. We can say that this was well supported by the Conservation Commission. Link to their page. And the city council approves it. So, I mean, it's not right. untrue to say it's the city's plan and not yeah. the subcommittee's plan. Yeah. Right. But they originally that you know, they're, they're looking to the subcommittee or to the committees to come forward with what needs to happen. I love and, a shout out. I love that idea. That's great. Um, you know, so f yeah, for example, on the, on the planning commission, we have four, you know, five planners. And, you know, two attorneys, uh, you know, basically just an idea of sort of the depth of knowledge, because otherwise we're just a volunteer group of, of who knows, you know, we don't know anything. So um, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I mean, like less is more at some point. And... Mm -hmm. Less information is more. Yeah, it, it, it's no one needs to know that that we have attorneys on the. I mean, that just I tell people real, that, that all the time, a, Aaron. Credibility across the board. If you say that, I mean, come on. Aaron, <laughs> I used to tell people it was six attorneys and me. Yes. So and, yeah, and, and yeah. people said I'm not going to read that document. <laughs> no, they said, oh, know. well, now I know it's very clear. Uh, it's clearly written. It's clearly <laughs> worded. <laughs> Uh, so, Mike, what are your reactions? I mean, just looking through real quick, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, I think it's the stuff that Barb points out is already here. I mean, it might just need a subheader or something, but I mean, an introduction to the MEAC, you know, who they are, what their charge was, um, and this was taken from there. The next paragraph talks about what the, the fact that they organized the, the, our key goal for energy um, this is directly out of their stuff. And then the very next paragraph is a number of significant projects have been completed, including this, 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 and this. Now, I mean, we could wordsmith and add more and take things away, but, you know, the, the thought is, you know, as I'm putting things together, was I really far off the mark in how I was structuring a chapter? Because, again, I don't expect any of the drafts I give you to be perfect. I'm putting words on a page and structuring things, and I'm talking about the right things. You might not think I've mentioned everything or done everything right, but I'm talking about the right things. And that's what I, as the author, need to know. Am I, am I way off base in how I word things and the things that I am talking about? Or, you know, if because if, if I am way off base, then then I need to come back and and we, we need to make sure we're talking at the same wavelength because I don't want to write, I don't want to spend three days writing this and have each one of them thrown out. I want to be able to say, all right, I understand we're going to wordsmith it. We're going to maybe take out a paragraph. We're going to expand. You know, we should talk more about this. And Mike, you talked way too much about that. Um, we, we don't need to talk nearly as much about that as you did. We can break this down to two sentences. That's what I kind of expect um, as we get into these, but for me to be able to develop the chapters, I have to have everyone say, yeah, we should have a chapter that talks about this, um, but don't talk about this as much as you are, or that's fine. I think you did a, a pretty decent job in the amount and the detail of the things you're talking about. Um, obviously, summarize of information, um, we've got a lot of stuff to fill in there. Um, you know, should we, shouldn't we, in a written text, of our chapter, should we be talking about aspirations and goals? Or if we are, should we be talking about it more or less? And that's really kind of the thoughts that, that I need, knowing that we're gonna go in and wordsmith this. Um, if, if we're pretty close, um, again, somebody can come through and volunteer and say, I'm gonna put together, um, you know, we've got the version, 
somebody can come through and start to, to do some edits to say, hey, you know, Barb wants to come through and put some wordsmith edits and then come back to the planning commission and said, I'd like you guys to approve these edits to the to the document. Great. That's what we that's what kind of we're going to need. But I can't have everything sitting on the side um, waiting because then I don't know as I write transportation whether I'm doing you know, sh should I make transportation look like energy or is energy so far off the map that I need to start over? Because if I start over that, then I've got to start over energy. And if I'm already working on housing, then I'm starting to dig myself a big hole. Yeah, I think that's helpful, mm -hmm. Mike. And I think mm -hmm. the committee, when we talked about this last week, I think we thought it was good. If anything, I would say smaller amounts of text on the last part about the um, aspirations and goals, just because there's a whole page with those on them, and they'll have plenty of words there. So kind of an overview, I would be fine with. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I mean, less is more is definitely the case where, you know, you could have just bulleted items so that people can sort of glance through them because they're gonna see more explanation in other locations. Um, I think the part I had the most trouble with in energy, and maybe this isn't one that's going to show up anywhere else, is the idea that the, the whole, that wait and see section, um, because I just, you know, I, I don't think that's the intention of the energy plan. So um, it may not, that may not come up in any of the other plans. So maybe it's just a um, aberration of this one, that it, the way that the, the goals are split. Yeah, and that's, and that's going to be a wordsmithing thing. I mean, uh, again, if it comes down to one sentence that we want to talk about editing, I mean, I think the one you're referring to is this last sentence that's here that says our ability to influence residents and businesses to convert to electrical vehicles is probably something we will not be able to do for some time into the future, but we should be able to ensure that charging stations are available and that al alternates to single occupant vehicles are encouraged. Um, and again, I'm trying to pull out of what is actually in the implementation strategy to kind of go through and, and lay out, you know, somebody doesn't have to look at that 10 page, you know, nine, nine goal thing. I'm going to kind of digest that down. It did come out a little bit long, but, um, and I think this chapter actually was long because it's like 2,300 words. So it actually is almost 800 words too long, but rather than start to chew it down, I wanted to get it to you guys. Um, and if, you know, if you guys find places that are like, this is the place to, this is the place to make it smaller then um, because it is, it is long. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that people are generally happy with the headings. Like Barb definitely pointed out some things for us to think about. Um, so are we okay with proceeding with the expectation that these will be the headings for each chapter and will fit the information we want to include within those headings? Is that acceptable to everyone? Yes. Some nods are good. Like. Okay. All right. All right. So, so that's what we'll plan to do. We'll, we'll, we'll adapt what we want to say. We like all the information that Barb says she wants to include, like, yeah, let's do that. But I think we can do it within the headings. Um, so the next question in my mind is taking, taking the chapters and the implementation, um, you know, the implementation section of the chapters one by one and how to, uh, we have, we have working groups for some of them, but we don't have working groups for other ones. Um, obviously we all like Mike needs to distribute these ahead of time for us to look at going into the meeting and we all need to read them before the meeting and know what our thoughts are are about how to improve the substance, right? The substance is the main thing. Um, are we going to have people who are interested in like wordsmithing ahead of meetings? Or is that something we want to say as a policy, you know, 
as an orderly policy, like that we we wait and do wordsmithing after the meetings. But then I can see people having a hard time wanting to vote something out if we haven't done that. So, so I mean, what what approach is going to work for everyone in in tackling these? Well, I think it's a timing. There's a bit of a timing consideration, right? If if somebody's going to wordsmith beforehand, we would need to be shopped around with enough time to vote on it, or is it just, or do we do two meetings per? Um, I mean, like, depends on the, how we front load them. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I'm trying to, you know, in some ways, I'm trying to to walk myself through it too. I mean. In the past, we like the planning commission has, uh, you know, talk things over with Mike. We haven't had anything written ahead of time, and we kind of tell him what we want. He takes his notes, and then he comes back with the draft. But I've heard from people numerous times that like they'd be interested in getting in there themselves. Um, if if we are going to have like you know, planning commissioners do that, then. Or after. Is, is that something that happens within the subcommittees, the ta the task forces? I think we're talking about the non subcommittee ones. Mostly talking about that, yeah. Okay. I think, I think all right. So we're, you're not yeah. saying that we're going to create more subcommittees. Um, no. All right. <laughs> so, for if example, any, if anything, we got we should start wrapping those up. Yeah. But yeah, for the not for the ones for the ones that we're just ha uh, tackling as the planning commission itself. I mean, I mean, what are what are people comfortable with? I mean, uh, I I don't have I mean, a preference. Should we just try one where we all read it beforehand? If you have wordsmithing, bring it to the thing. If it's massive wordsmithing we can try to figure it out as a group if it's small stuff that'll be easy to figure out as a group and then see where we get and if if it so happens that it's like a lot of a lot of people have a lot of things to say about it and we just can't do it in one then well we'll try a different approach next time i, th I think that's a i think that's a fine idea and the only thing i would add to that is maybe if if I'd be okay if someone wants to do non-substantive, you know, like actual wordsmithing at like, you know, of just with concentrating on the writing and not the substance after we've approved it, like I'd be comfortable. And then we'd look at it again. But mm -hmm. Everyone okay with like the way that Marcelo laid it out, which is we read it, we talk substance, we give Mike our notes and proceed from there as we tackle these. Okay. So we these would be the perceived as simpler chapters, such as yeah. Yeah. What, like what what might come next to give give us a sense of what. It, yeah, what we, we 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 do want to learn that from from Mike. Like like, what's what's lined up and ready to go, Mike? So the historic would be the first, um, and again, if we've got a subcommittee or if there's. Uh, whether, I mean, if there isn't a subcommittee, then we'll have to have some, some decision, but I can go up and finish historic. Um, and I'm going to put all these on the Google drive. Cause I think that's the best place for us to get them. Um, and then I think the key is just, if you're going to go through and do a bunch of wordsmithing to kind of, um, maybe save it as a separate document, download it, save, save it as a separate document. Oh yeah. Uh, Please do. We're we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that so everybody understands. We're not we're, for for like at least for now we're going to tackle it as a group and um, deal with Mike's version when we talk about it. All right. So I'll I'll put them in. Um, and again, then I, so for historic, I think we're close enough. I don't think the goals are going to change. I don't think the aspiration is going to change. So I can populate the strategies, and then we'll have all. All the pieces of historic are done and in your plate for you guys to approve. There is a written chapter. Um, you know, it may not be fully fleshed out for, for everything and how it's going to go. 
Um, but there, it, it is all there. Um, and then there is the implementation strategy that's in that Excel table. And I'll go through and finish populating that last set of strategies. Um, and then you guys can go through and, you know, I think, you know, my, my recommendation would be to first approve them. And it may be something that's relatively quick to approve the, the more general straightforward pieces, you know, hey, we agree with the aspiration, we agree with the goals, we agree with the strategies, you know, now wordsmithing wise, I think I would change this and I would change that word. Um, I think this is too long and we could collapse, you know, th this is too wordy and we can, you know, make this one shorter and I've got some recommended things over here that I'll, I'll have you guys, you know, so somebody can come in and, and say, I can, I can write the CLG description much better than Mike did. And I'm fine with that. Um, but I think what's important is to start out with the structure to go through and say, I like the big stuff. Now we're down to wordsmithing. Then we can put it all in the document. And when everything is done in November and December, when we've got 10 or 12 plans all on, on draft web pages, we can always go through and make more edits there to go through and say, I want to tweak this and tweak that. But I can get historic done. Um, and then if somebody's got a subcommittee that tells me that aspirations and goals are good, I can start populating some of these other ones. Are there, are there any others, Mike, that um, maybe I'm being too hopeful, but I'm thinking we've, we've actually worked on historic quite a bit. I'm hoping that we actually get through that without needing a full meeting. And parks, Ming. We were going to talk to them? Alec. We were going to talk to oh. Alec about parks so before we do a final vote. Um, if he doesn't get back to me in like a month or so, then maybe we don't. Maybe we could scrap that idea. Um, what about what about energy? Having like, and it doesn't have to be the chapter and the implementation strategy. Just one or the other, maybe, is something to shoot for for next time too. Yeah, I think I would have to go through and um, put the energy implementation strategy into the correct format. Um, yeah, that, in, in chapter, the format. that chapter isn't in the uh, spreadsheets, right? So do we, do we need to do any um, adjusting of any of the... Um, aspirations or goals to for you to be able to put those in Mike yeah we would have to probably at the next meeting so if we did historic and then approve the aspirations and goals at the next meeting then between sorry I mean on the energy one um, would you be able to take the energy plan and put that into aspirations and goals in the um, yeah, I can the put the aspirations and goals in. I just wouldn't have the strategies in. Well, maybe we could take a look at that before the next meeting. It doesn't have to be that one, Mike. It's just whatever, um, whatever is like ready, just to uh, something to go to. Yeah, I mean, uh, for implementation strategies, we've um, there is housing, but I think you guys were going to have a housing subcommittee. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, we're going to um, plan in the next day or two, we're going to meet uh, plan a meeting. Yeah, there's natural resources, but I think there's a subcommittee on that, and there's transportation. Mike, on natural resources, would you put it in the Google? Because I cannot find it in my email. And then I was going to ask, I think it's Marcella and I, and is there a third person on that? Aaron, group? Was Aaron, it Aaron? Yeah. Okay. So we should probably talk we about meeting, be. too. I just, I just cannot find it. <laughs> yeah, I'll go through and try to populate as much as I can. Any of the, because we've got a number of implementation strategies. I think there's actually six or seven of them that are done. Not all of them are, are saved on the page. Um, so I'll just do this. 
So I'll, I'll go ahead and restress if we're going to, uh, for the for the working groups, Mike was saying that we don't need to spend time collapsing the uh, the uh, strategies. Right. Uh, yeah, don't unless, worry about the strategies. You, Aspirations and goals. Unless there's like a policy reason or something, unless you like want big changes or something and there's a reason to. Um, Kirby, I have a question. Add them, though. Go ahead, Barb. Yes. Um, after the last meeting, I think I had volunteered to collapse the transportation aspirations and goals. So I just sent that to the CNS committee today. Um, so is that something that they should look at first, or should we look that, at that um, in the transportation subcommittee? I would say transportation. I think CNS has like done wonderful work for us so far, but they don't need to review. Right. I'm just like trying to figure out if this is what the kind of thing that would fit into their format, but I guess we can decide that ourselves. Yeah, I'm not okay. sure from the committee's point of view that it makes sense for us to review the collapsing. If you guys feel that they go together, then they go together. Yeah, that was that was the point of, of us going over uh, parks earlier and looking at how it was done. And in fact, that's supposed to give us all an idea of how to do it. OK, so we'll do it in the Transportation Committee. Yeah, unless you don't want to do the collapsing because Mike said he's fine doing that. No, I already did yeah, a version, but I sent it out. I sent it out to CNS, so I just now I just so CNS you can ignore it, and we'll talk about it in the transportation subcommittee first. Yeah. So for anyone, once you get to the the site, all of these are in. So you go to historic resources, you'll probably find um, the written implementation strategy. You might find actually two versions. Looks like there are actually two versions in here figure out what's up with that. Um, but there'll be a written chapter, there might be that implementation strategy, and then there's the template. So um, if you're looking for a chapter to try to figure out, you know, natural resources, we don't have anything there yet. Um, energy, it looks like we have um, uh, the one with Barb's comments, we've got the original energy plan chapter, and we've got an implementation strategy. So um, but we don't have the in, in the other format yet. So um, that's where you find them. So if you're looking for them, this is where I'm going to be plugging them in is onto this page here into their appropriate and chapters. Mike, just for like clarity and convenience. So um, will you, will you send a link to that landing page? Like right now? Yeah, I everyone? think Stephanie did at the last meeting, but um, and it, it was actually in the email for today's agenda as well. Uh -oh. Okay, if, so it's in the email for today's agenda, everybody. Can we um, confirm next next meeting we want to look at historic and energy? Is that what we just said? <coughs> we didn't. We didn't land on that. Mike, okay. it sounded to me like Mike wasn't sure if he would have the um, implementation strategy done. Okay, so definitely historic. Definitely well, historic. I think we'll have the historic chapter and the historic implementation strategy. I think that's that's pretty good. Um, and then we would probably have to have a discussion on the energy aspirations and goals. And I think that's fine. That's because that then if we get yeah, approval of the, of the aspirations and goals, then I can populate the implementation, the strategies after that's all done. And if we have time to talk about the chapter energy chapter, which is the separate piece, we can do that. Well, thank you. Okay, well, this is, I mean, it's exciting for us to, to finally have the foundation under us to start getting through these. So I think that's great. 
Um, the last thing on our agenda, we have 10 minutes left, is to um, talk about plans for resuming in-person meetings. Uh, I, I guess I, I, I guess start, Mike, Mike, why don't you start? Um, do you have ideas about this or you just, or is this an open question? Uh, it's a little bit of an open question. So city council is going to be talking on Wednesday about restarting in-person meetings. Um, planning staff is um, kind of hoping that this, that we'll be holding off until July. Uh, we can, I could certainly start in June if we wanted to start having in-person meetings in June. Um, but uh, because what we're trying to do is to make sure everybody, like I said, I just got my second shot. So in two weeks, I'll be fully vaccinated. So, um, you know, I'll be set to go by the time our next meeting comes up. Um, but that's not true of all my staff. Um, they won't be through all their vaccinations until June. So we're kind of waiting. City Hall, uh, there's, a, there's also a discussion at council is City Hall is going to be opening up um, July 5th. Um, after the 4th of July weekend, um, City Hall, we think, will probably be opening back up. Um, so we're kind of expecting the next question is, okay, what happens with all of our committees that have been meeting remotely? Do we start meeting in person again? Um, do some of those, we know council is probably, possibly going to be starting to meet in person before July 5th. But that vote is yet to come up. That's going to be discussed in council on Wednesday. But we just wanted to start, you know, letting people know, putting it out there that this conversation is going on. Um, these nice remote meetings where I can sit in my office at home is coming to an end. Um, and where is everybody else at? What's the comfort level of the committee, uh, the commission on starting to meet? When do you guys want, if everybody was chomping at the bit and said, no, as soon as possible, we should start meeting in person. If everybody's comfortable waiting till July. Well, as, as much as I miss sitting around that round table with everybody, uh, I'm in no real hurry. I mean, it's, I, I'm happy to meet whenever I'll, I'll be fully vaccinated in three weeks. So, um, but obviously if there are those of you that are not vaccinated or are hesitant, I am happy to continue this way until everybody feels comfortable. Is there an expectation that every, like is the baseline that we're going back? What's gonna probably happen is um, there, will, there will almost certainly be a um, a format changed July 5th. So if you guys said, you know what, we're still not comfortable and we want to continue to meet remotely, I'll, I'll probably have to review this with the city manager as to what we do. But what would possibly happen is we continue to meet, to meet remotely, but I am hosting from the city council chambers where the public is welcome to attend. Um, and that would probably, we would have this all looks the same, except there's going to be another box down here for, for city council chambers where, I mean, if it's like any, most of our meetings, there's probably not going to be anybody there. But if somebody did want to come, they could sit in and attend in the city council chambers and um, speak and participate. Um, and you guys would all be still remote. Or if some of you wanted to show up, you could, you know, sit, sit at the DS and we would kind of have a little bit of the same stuff or sit at the table because you guys usually just sat at the table. Um, but I think, I think there's some hybrid opportunities where we're not exclusively one or the other, but I think what would almost certainly happen in July is we would be opening, opening up public access to our meeting. Just no longer be here. I would be in city hall hosting the meeting there. Anyone else have feelings? I feel no rush. Ditto. I feel like we have better participation. 
from ourselves on from, from the safety of our of our respective yeah <laughs> I don't know if that's just because most of my time with this committee has been during the pandemic but um I feel like we see people more <laughs> I, if I'm being honest, I feel like attendance is better, but I feel like participation is easier to like blend in the background. I feel like people, more people talk more probably in person, but that doesn't have a strong bearing on my feelings about rushing back. I think it sounds like we will go for now. Let's just decide on no earlier than July 5th and then decide then how to proceed. Is that, is that acceptable? To you, Mike, for now. Yes, uh, if that's what you guys want, I can certainly bring that back to to Bill and let him know. Um, I think you're gonna we're gonna probably find a lot of other committees are following suit that there's not a big rush, but there are occasionally some groups that are just um, they they like that interaction um, and and want to start meeting. So we'll see where they, you know, there's probably gonna be a couple that are gonna meet in person. Um, but I think, like you said, I think the interesting thing is going to be what do we do once we hit July 5th? Um, and is hybrid meeting the thing of the future where we continue to have these remote meetings? And, um, you know, I actually think this format gives a lot more flexibility for a member of the public um, because they could be sitting at home right now and, you know, just click and watch the entire meeting from their, you know, from their living room if they wanted to and participate if they wanted to. And so I think there's more, more flexibility to getting public input here, even though it's just not what people do. So I think, but I think the opportunity, there's more opportunity in this format, in my opinion. Yeah. I agree with you. If, if you're going to pass some feedback along, I think, yeah, it seems like we would all like the hybrid to at least be an option going forward. Because sometimes, I mean, sometimes people just can't attend because they're away for something, but but they could if the hybrid's an option. So that would just probably help our attendance in the long run anyway. Yeah, and I think if it's if City Hall's open on July 6th, then, you know, as we get into that first meeting in July, like I said, I think I don't think it's that big of a deal for me to be in, um, in City Hall to host the meeting. And, you know, we can have any member of the public who wants to show up and speak to something, whether whether it's we get to the housing, whether we get to community services, maybe somebody hears about it and wants to come in and talk about the homelessness issue and they don't have access to the, the technology that's necessary to participate. Um, well, they could show up at the meeting. So I will pass that along. Great. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Um, so it looks like we know what to expect next time. Does anybody have anything else they want to mention before we adjourn? Okay. Oh, do we need to pass the minutes? Did we do that? Oh, yeah. Did I skip that? Oh. Good catch, Ariane. Thanks. I move the approval of the oh. minutes. I'll second. <laughs> <Last meeting. laughs> All right. Well, we we have a motion to approve the minutes. Who is the second? I'll second. Okay, second by Stephanie. Um, a discussion. Is anybody uncomfortable with voting on the minutes right now? Okay. Those in favor of approving I... the minutes. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Was that that you're uncomfortable or the? <laughs> Sorry, somebody's moving the mouse over here. That's not me. Um. <laughs> oh, his <laughs> shouting eye uh, alarmed Aaron's dog, I see. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> always alarmed. He's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes approved. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? You do. Okay, motion by Aaron. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Barb. Those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Okay, everybody have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.